Hello and welcome to Powerboat Television. I'm Matt Spencer and this week on the show we're back in Muskoka to take an in-depth look at this famous boating and cottage paradise. Home to some of the most breathtaking sunrises and sunsets, vast lookouts and extravagant homes and cottages, Muskoka has long since been a getaway from the hustle and bustle of the city life. One trip by day boat or steamship and you're immediately taken away by the scenery of trees, islands and never-ending granite rock formations. Looking back in the history of the area, it seems some things never change. Muskoka Tourism says the area's rise in popularity can be dated back to the mid-1800s. Even then, people of all class levels used the pristine lakes and invigorating air as a getaway right in their own backyards. The railway had reached as far north as Gravenhurst in 1875, and even further to Bracebridge ten years later, with lumber mills as one of the main sources of industry. With the railroad came more and more visitors, many in the form of sportsmen looking to hunt and fish. With them soon after came their families and local settlers learned that providing food and lodging to the travelers to be a more profitable business. And thus the modern era of the resort and hotel industry in Muskoka was born. If it was the railroad that led to the birth of the tourism era in Muskoka, then it was the steamships that helped it grow. A man by the name of Alexander Coburn started the Muskoka Navigation Company in the mid-1800s. It was through the Muskoka Navigation Company and support from the government that Coburn began construction of a steamship to be later launched in 1866 called the Winona. The Winona first played a major part in the development of waterways and roads in the area and greatly opened up the Muskoka Lakes to many people. It provided a way for many to get to their summer homes, deliver mail to the dock, and was a simpler means of mass public transportation around this flourishing region. And the steamship era is still alive and well today at the Muskoka Wharf in Gravenhurst. It is home port to the oldest operating steamship in North America at over 120 years old, the RMS Seguin. She is joined by the beautifully appointed Winona II and the classic steam yacht Wanda III. To this day, the steamships are a very popular way for all visitors to the area to become a boater for a short time and experience this magical area from a different view. Lunch and dinner cruises are often sold out, along with the very popular Fall Colors Tour. No matter which one you choose, the steamships are a relaxing way to let someone else be the captain and just sit back and take in the wonderful scenery. For those in need of a little adventure, the Winona 2 offers pirate cruises on the weekends for kids of all ages and the kid at heart. These exciting cruises are a welcomed break from the everyday norm and allows those on the cruise to be a pirate for the morning and have an adventure on the high seas of Lake Muskoka. To tell us more about the pirate cruise, we caught up with John Miller, the general manager of the Muskoka Steamships and Historical Society. We wanted to do something for kids uh, with the ships and uh, started five years ago. Uh, our first cruise, uh, we had about 40 kids and we've been sold out ever since. The pirate cruise, it's, it's like little theater. Uh, we have Captain Hook who runs the entire cruise and he has a crew. Uh, and then we usually we have about 100 dressed up kids and adults that uh, board the ship and we do all sorts of pirate games and we actually uh, do a few battles as well. We have uh, some cottages that participate with us and they have cannons and things like that. They stage many battles against the ship because we're always trying to take their property. It's a great way to, uh, you know, to, to have, have kids get on the ship, ships at an early age. Uh, when we have Seguin, we always hear about people that come back as adults that say they rode the ships when they were little kids, and, and this is a great way to uh, ensure for future customers. Once you're finished the cruise of swashbuckling and pirateering, the Winona 2 returns you home to Muskoka Wharf, where you can grab a bite to eat or stop in one of the many shops along the boardwalk. For those who bring their own boat who want to lead their own crews, the wharf is a great jumping off point for exploring the Muskoka Lakes, and later in the show, that's just what we'll do. Welcome back as we continue on this voyage of discovery of the Muskoka Lakes. When we left off, we had just finished a swashbuckling adventure on the Muskoka steamships that sail out of the Muskoka Wharf. Over the years, the wharf certainly hasn't been a stranger to the show, and for new visitors to the area, it should make a great beginning for your destination especially if you're a trailer boater. The Muskoka Wharf Marina makes a great place to launch your boat and fuel up for the day, as well as grab a snack or two for the trip. From here, it's just a short jaunt up Gravenhurst Bay, through the Narrows, and you're into the open waters of Lake Muskoka, the largest of the Muskoka Lakes. As you set your itinerary for the day, you should be sure to make your first visit to Eleanor Island, which is just a short cruise from the Narrows. 
And while from afar it may seem like something out of a Hitchcock film, the island is actually a protected national wildlife area home to many species of migratory birds. Be sure to bring binoculars because this little gem is best viewed from the water to not disturb the habitats of the nesting birds. And to be honest, the smell isn't the greatest either. From here, if you venture to the northeast shore, you will find Kirby's Beach tucked neatly into a south-facing cove. Watch your depth as you approach as it does drop off quickly, but once in, you can walk your boat in to anchor and enjoy the beach for the afternoon or a sunset picnic as well. Around the corner from Kirby's Beach is a great spot to fill your fuel tanks for both you and your boat at the Pride of Muskoka. A full-service dealer since the mid-80s, Pride offers a full-service department with indoor and outdoor storage and is a dealer of some of the most elite boat brands. Stop in the Cabana Board Shop too before heading back out to grab an ice cream or one of the latest and greatest boards on the water today in the fully stocked Pro Shop. Being on the eastern shore of the lake, you're only a short boat ride away from the popular tourist attraction of Millionaire's Row. It's no secret that the Muskoka region is home to some of the most elaborate and extravagant cottages, and Millionaire's Row is a classic example of this. Many of these cottages are originals and have been well maintained by their owners who show genuine pride in being Muskoka cottagers. These cottages are often passed down to be enjoyed by generations. As you continue your trip on Lake Muskoka, extravagant cottages will be a continuing theme throughout. Many are spectacular to see, so be sure to stop and enjoy, but maintain an appropriate distance to respect the privacy of the owners. Once on the northern end of the lake, keep a close eye to your GPS and charts as this can be one of the more challenging navigational parts through Lake Muskoka, known as the Kettles. These can be a destination among themselves, with many islands to tour around, often hiding inlets perfect for anchoring. Just be wary of rock shoals throughout. If you would like to head into Port Carling, it's just a quick jump up the Indian River, but our trip will take us under the upcoming railway bridges and into Bala Bay and the town of Bala, Ontario. Bala makes a great stop for the day if you choose to head to Windsor Park to rest your sea legs. But if it's for overnight accommodations you're looking for, the Bala Bay Inn is right down the road and has their own docking facilities to accommodate boaters as well. If you decide to stay the night, you may be lucky enough to take in a concert at the infamous Key to Bala. Originally opened as a dance hall in the 40s, the Key is no stranger to big ticket performances and is a premier Canadian concert destination. From here, the town of Bala is just a short hike up the road where it's hard not to be taken in by the old Muskoka charm that surrounds the town. The grocery store and LCBO are right in town, along with many local shops as well. And if you make Bala a stop on your trip, be sure to visit Don's Bakery to indulge your sweet tooth. Bala is where we'll conclude our journey for this trip, but next week we will continue our voyage through the spectacular boating and cottage destination, including a stop at one of the most extravagant cottages in the region. Hello and welcome to Powerboat Television. I'm Matt Spencer and this week on the show we're continuing our stay in Ontario's premier boating and cottage destination, Muskoka. Last week on the show, we spent our time on the biggest of the lakes in Muskoka, aptly named Lake Muskoka. This week, we're starting off in the hub of the lakes, Port Carling. Port Carling connects Lakes Muskoka and Rosso with a set of locks. On any given summer day, the town is abuzz with activity and makes a great stop on any boating trip. As you approach the town, you're first greeted by Hannah Park on the right, and there's a water access grocery store on the left-hand shore as well. Rounding the corner into Steamboat Bay, and you're in Port Carling. There are public docks for you to tie up and visit one of the many shops situated right on the waterfront, including the LCBO and the brand new Turtle Jack's restaurant. Heading into the locks, you can head one of two ways. Staying to the left are the larger, full-service locks that can comfortably handle boats with up to a 9-foot beam. To the right are the smaller locks that were built right into the dam. These locks are often self-operated and can fit two bow riders. Once you're through, tie up to the far side of the island and make a stop in the Muskoka Lakes Museum. This tiny museum is packed with history and gives visitors a look at what life as an early Muskoka pioneer was like. It also celebrates the history of boat building in the region as well, including the disappearing propeller boat, or dippies as they're fondly called. From here, Lake Rosso is just a short trip up the Indian River that is very well marked into the open lake. A sure stop to make is by Windermere House, one of the premier resorts in the region. 
Originally established in 1870, Windermere continues to be a popular spot for those looking to escape the city and relax by the water. Heading north up the lake, you're going to want to make a side trip into Skeleton Bay to see one of the most impressive displays of Muskoka granite. From here, we opted to head right to the north end of the lake to the town of Rosso. A lighthouse just off the shore marks the entrance, and as you approach, you're greeted by a quaint waterfront that has recently gone under a $2.5 million facelift. You know, it's the small town charm that brings boaters into the towns here in the Muskoka Lakes. And with a farmer's market like here in Rosso, right on the water, you can boat right up and take some of that small town charm home with you. The farmer's market is each and every Friday between July and September. The market is a great spot to pick up some one-of-a-kind arts and crafts along with fresh produce. But don't stop here. Make your trek up the hill into town to visit the antique store and legendary Rosso General Store. Heading back down the lake, you want to make sure you time your drive past St. John's Church just right. If you look to the left, you'll see Queen Victoria's Rock, which gets its name from the silhouette it displays against the sky. Heading west down the lake towards Port Sandfield, you pass the newest and more impressive resorts on the lake in The Rosso, Canada's first JW Marriott resort that looks just as impressive on the inside as it does the outside. Neighboring The Rosso is Cleveland's house. Established in 1869, Cleves has since then grown to encompass 408 acres along the Lake Rosso shoreline, along with growing their list of returning, loyal families each season. Heading into the southern bay of Lake Rosso, you will find Port Sandfield and the entrance to Lake Joseph. Named in 1870 after the then Ontario Premier John Sandfield MacDonald, the port is home to one of the oldest swing bridges in Canada. As you make your way into Lake Joe, you'll find out that the cottages on this lake are few and far between compared to the other two lakes, but it is also home to some of the more impressive looking estates. The lake itself is arguably the most difficult to navigate, so be sure to keep an eye on the shoal markers as well as the cottages. Not to be outdone by the other two, Lake Joe also boasts its own display of impressive Muskoka granite at the north end of the lake. And of course, some cottagers make use of this impressive granite for what's sure to be one of the best views in Muskoka. Later in the show, we'll head back to Lake Rosso for a tour of one of the most extravagant cottages on the lake, as well as taking a trip on the water slide. Welcome back to our tour of the Muskoka Lakes. It's no secret that the Muskoka region is home to some of the most impressive homes and cottages in all of Ontario. From the classic looking boathouses to the expansive estates, they truly are breathtaking sights to cruise by when on a boat trip. Like this elaborate home nestled right on the waterfront as you leave Skeleton Bay on Lake Rosso. It's fun to ask as you pass by, I wonder what that cottage is like on the inside. Hi, my name is Bobby Genovese and welcome to my home on Lake Rosso. Follow me for a tour. Walking up the rock steps, you're greeted by a hot tub for relaxing and keeping warm when the water gets cold. Up a couple more steps and you'll find the upper pool that's fed by a 50-foot waterfall. This feeds into the 200-foot water slide that I just had to try. And if that wasn't enough, to hide the expansive plumbing system to pump all that water from the lake, he put in a rock climbing wall with auto belay system. And while Bobby G's cottage is state-of-the-art, he still cherishes the history and essence of Muskoka, with the original cabin from 1939 still on the property. It has recently seen a modern restoration, but still keeps that rustic feel, with one of the best views on the property. Bobby told us this is the most popular room for his guests. Heading across the bridge and into the cottage, you're immediately surrounded by first-class luxury that's extremely tasteful. From the dining room to the screened-in sunroom, the cottage is complete understated elegance. Heading out the patio doors and a short walk down the steps, you're into the part of the home that's almost more impressive than the house itself, the boathouse. The finish is rustic and well-decorated with a lineup of boats you'd expect to see at a show. For the family runabout, there's the Chris Craft 22 launch. The Malibu handles all the water sports duties along with a full line of water toys along the back wall. Bobby G's floating work of art is a real jaw-dropper. Pissed Off is a 31-foot custom wooden boat built in Collingwood, Ontario. Inside, the interior is an excellent blend of classic details mixed with modern-day appointments. Powering this masterpiece is twin supercharged 440 Hemis that sound like a rocket ship when starting up and taking off. 
And on the lift is Bobby G's pride and joy, the Miss Canada 3, which was the first Canadian boat to break the world speed record in 1939, a collector's dream. Bobby G's cottage is on a rock point that makes perfect use of the day from sunrise to sunset. And from here we say goodbye to Bobby and his family and thank them for welcoming us into his home. Bobby G's hospitality is just a prime example of how the entire region opens their arms to visitors. In this majestic space, there's really only about 50,000 permanent residents, with up to 100,000 seasonal property owners who take refuge in this mecca of relaxation from their stressful and hectic lives in the city. Muskoka has come a long way from its frontier roots, now considered Ontario's premier year-round vacation destination, and as we finish up our tour, it's really no wonder why. With 2,500 square miles of towering pines, granite cliffs, and sparkling water, the landscape is truly captivating. Combine that with the array of shopping and dining options, recreational activities, artist studios, and genuinely friendly service. It's easy to see what has been attracting people to Muskoka for years. And if you want to see more of what Muskoka has to offer, be sure to visit our website.